The Aquastar Deep Star, reborn, again. That's right, re-reborn. Let me back up several decades. The Aquastar brand was founded in 1962 as a sub-brand of Jean Richard. Aquastar was arguably the first watch brand to focus exclusively on dive watches. Several watchmakers were producing dive watches, but they weren't only producing dive watches like Aquastar was. In 1965, the Deep Star was introduced. A manually wound dive chronograph with a big eye 30 minute counter, a skin diver case, and a new type of timing bezel which would be patented just a year later. I'll confuse you with that bezel in a minute. The Aquasar brand had its ups and downs, especially downs during the quartz crisis of the 70s and 80s, changing hands several times until it stopped production in 2018. Enter Rick Murray. Even if you've not heard his name before, if you've been around watches for the last few years, you know his work. Rick Murray first helped Doxa relaunch the Sub 300 about 20 years ago, and he's likely one of the reasons for Doxa's current success. Rick also bought and relaunched Aquadive watches, Synchron watches, Isoprene straps, and Tropic straps. And of course, he also bought and resurrected Aquastar watches. Murray is kind of like a necromancer of dive watch companies, which doesn't sound as complimentary as I intended it. In 2020, Aquastar was reborn with the Deep Star Dive Chronograph. Yes, wait, no, not this one. Well, kinda. At first glance, this new watch would seem to be that exact same 2020 Deep Star, but this 2022 Deep Star is actually an iteration on that original watch, and I think it's a welcome one. The 2020 Deep Star watch was 40.5 millimeters across and 50 millimeters long. This new one is 39 millimeters across and 49 millimeters long. Just slightly smaller in two dimensions, really. Is it worth machining new cases, re-engineering the bezel, sourcing new parts? I'll tell you. I don't know. I don't have a 2020 Deep Star here to compare to, and I've never tried one on. But from the hundreds of watches I've tried on my 7-inch wrist, I do know that even a 1.5mm change in width or length can make a noticeable difference. The original batch of Deep Star Chronograph watches sold out quickly. Quick enough that offering another batch with those same original dimensions, I'm pretty sure that those would sell out too. So it seems that this minor redesign comes from an interest in addressing customer feedback and trying to make the best and most wearable watch possible. That or they didn't want to pay for extra steel. I don't know, and I don't care much. What I do care about is how this wears, how it looks, and how it works. 39 millimeters wide, 49 millimeters long, the Deep Star is 16.8 millimeters thick, measuring to the top of the domed crystal. 14.8 if you just measure the case. Not slim, and not light either. On this Beads of Rice bracelet, the watch weighs 180 grams. It has 21 millimeter lug spacings. Yeah, I know. 200 meters of water resistance and a 120 click bezel. There are three color options available. This dial is called Blue Ray. There's also Vintage Black and Steel Gray. Right now, the watch can be pre-ordered for a price of $2,790 on a rubber tropic strap, not this bracelet. And once the pre-order time is done, it'll cost $3,590. Again, not on this bracelet. This bracelet will be sold separately for $189. Only 100 of each color will be made each year, so limited but not impossible to get. Inside the Deep Star is an automatic La Joux Paré chronograph movement, which is a departure from the 1965 reference that used a manually wound Valjou 23. The La Joux Paré has 55 hours of power reserve, 28 joules, and beats at 4 hertz. It has running seconds at 9 o'clock, central chronograph seconds, and at 3 o'clock is a 30 minute chronograph counter. The chronograph actuation feels really good. It takes a light touch to start and stop the chronograph and a firmer push to reset. In 1965, a dive watch with the chronograph was very rare. And not just that, but this bezel was actually the first of its kind. Some of you might be familiar with decompression timing bezels like those on Doxa watches. This, this is not that. 
This bezel is actually used to determine how much surface time is needed between dives. Super niche. The inner ring of the bezel is used as most dive bezels to track elapsed time of a dive, but the outer ring is used to estimate how much nitrogen has escaped from the bloodstream and thus when it's safe to go back in the water. The process starts with the depth and time of the first dive. Let's say a diver did a 25 minute dive to a depth of 39 meters. Using a dive table, a diver can know that after they dive, they have a nitrogen concentration of 1.6. Okay, 1.6. Once at the surface, the diver turns the bezel so that 1.6 is aligned with the hour hand. Once the hour hand gets to 1.4 or lower, the diver can go back in the water. How long and how deep they can go still depends on the nitrogen concentration in their blood though, and that can be calculated with this bezel also. If the diver waits for the hour hand to move into the section of the bezel that says normal, then they can dive again as if they were diving for the first time. Got it? Good. Oh yeah, also since this timing was developed over 60 years ago, don't use it. We have better science, so now forget everything I just said. Okay, from the theoretical back to the practical. I'm kind of surprised by the comfort of this watch on my 18 centimeter wrist. 180 grams of weight is quite a bit. That's about 15% heavier than a modern Speedmaster on a bracelet. But it doesn't feel too bulky or top heavy like I was expecting. I think part of that is due to the bracelet helping balance the weight of the watch head. I like bracelets that taper nicely and this one doesn't. It seems like it tapers just one millimeter but I actually think this might help with the overall weight distribution of the watch. It may seem funny that a heavier and wider bracelet would make a watch more wearable, but I think that's what's going on here. The bracelet has a dive extension, four micro adjustment holes, and uses screws for the links. Thank you, Aquastar. Under the domed crystal is a highly stylized scene. Like the rest of the watch, the Deep Star dial is nearly a copy of the original watch from the 1960s. Besides the single big eye register at 3 o'clock, I think a major design element is the trapezoidal polished markers at 12, 6, and 9. They frame large loom plots. It's all very pretty and true to the original Deep Star, but it's not very legible for me. The hands are fully polished and flat, and while I like their shapes, between the polish of the hands, the reflection of the domed crystal, and the 30mm wide dial, I've had trouble quickly reading the time, and that's been especially true when the hands are over the large silver chronograph subdial. In a strange way, I think my legibility issues are a side effect of the charm that this watch has. There aren't many watches that look like this, especially new ones that are built this well and with such attention to detail. When I look at the potential competition for this watch, there's nothing quite like this combination of heritage, design, and a price under $4,000. That really depends on whether or not you prioritize the vintage look or the dive ability. If the answer is both, if you really want a new mechanical dive chronograph with a vintage look, one that you can actually take diving, I think this might be the watch for you. Now I expect that most people who like this Deep Star aren't going to take it to serious depths. And I don't expect that they're going to use the bezel to determine blood nitrogen levels. In fact, they shouldn't and neither I nor Aquastar can be held legally responsible if you get the bends. But even I, who barely leaves his office, let alone gets into the ocean, even I find something appealing about this watch that can do things. A watch that's built for a purpose, even if I'll never use it for that purpose. What is that appeal? In a multitasking, distracting world, I think there's a beauty in the simplicity of an object that does one thing and does it really well. And I think this Deep Star has some of that beauty.